Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm going to do another little kind of rolling update because I still am working on some teachings. But uh, today, now I know the date because my birthday was yesterday, July 17th. Um, and I didn't even check the news yet. But I was, I don't know, I've been up for a while. It's about, oh, maybe 5.30, 5.35 a.m. Just a few notes. I've talked about the shooting in Baton Rouge. Now, I want you to understand something. I saw, I didn't watch the news this morning, but I watched it last night. And the guy, the uh, Marine, who shot the Baton Rouge cops, but I think I saw a little statement that he made on one of the videos. Something like, you know, we have to take action uh, because things are not, things don't stop. Now, those of you, I'll just give you one scenario. Um, people that watched the shooting of Castile, not the Baton Rouge uh, person that was shot, but the next night, a uh, black guy was shot in his vehicle, Castile, I think was his name, and that was the one where you had the girlfriend who Facebooked it live. Up the stream, live streamed it on Facebook. But then you had a little kid in the car, four-year-old black girl. And of course that officer discharged his weapon, killed the other guy, shot into the vehicle. Now, that was a horrendous scene, okay? Though they're investigating all that. And then you had the little black girl, four years old. Her mom still had the camera on, phone on. And the little black girl was calming her down. You know, they won't shoot you, mommy. Now, let, listen very closely. All of these incidents, for 25 years, when, when these incidents are normally completed, look, I did, I did not, I'm familiar with police reports. I didn't fill them out, but we did fire reports and all these things, and sometimes uh, you look at police reports because if it involves certain uh, things, you know, arson or whatever. Uh, but uh, what the officers have done and will do and will not stop doing, this is what you don't understand. Any incident where, whether they initially provoked it or not, they have a system, bar none, and it's not changing, where they will lie. They will lie about everything in that particular situation if they did wrong. Now, I'm not saying they're lying about every single situation where a black person is killed, but they lie every time where there is something that they did wrong, they will cover up. Now, I can go from case after case after case. The Chicago case. They said they shot, uh, I think it's Laquan McDonald, but they said they shot the Chicago black kid who was shot. Regardless of what you see, because the boy, the kid was going the other way, but he did have a knife, and the other officer shot him. I forget the name now. Every police report on that said that that black kid was lunging at the white officer. Every police report said they shot one time. Every police report, the chief, the investigator, everything lied about that entire thing. Now, you had the black family members of the boy who was shot in Chicago, you had every black witness, every black witness, saying these white cops are lying. They were saying it for a year and a half. And the newspapers, the Chicago mayor who's corrupt, he was part of Hillary's group, all corrupt those people, Rahm Emanuel, every one of them had that as much as they can. They went with the lie of the white officer who said, we shot once, he was coming at us to kill us. All of that was an absolute and complete lie. And finally, through the newspapers getting freedom of information requests, after a year and a half of going after the black families, the witnesses, all the cops lying, faking the reports, destroying dash cams, please understand, that will go on today. Today, that will go, today, I'm not going to go to Kingsville, I don't think, today. But I gave you many stories 
of illegal, all they do along that Highway 77, which I worked on, all they do all day long is make illegal stops. I give you cases in Highway 77, Robstown Driscoll, cases where they made them on me. And how did you know, John, they were illegal? Because as soon as they saw my fire department badge, they left. So they, they fully acknowledged they're breaking the law. Okay, they fully acknowledge that. How would that be dealt with in-house? This is what the average public just doesn't see. You might even have a police chief of a smaller town, though the police chief in Driscoll resigned because he was accused of stealing drugs out of the evidence. You might have a police chief. This is what I'm showing you. He might even call in an officer and say, look, you pulled over that Hispanic state senator six times in the last year, and he's going the speed limit. There's no reason you should have pulled him over. You, officer have been consistently breaking the law by pulling over the Hispanic state senator. And he's very aware of the law. He's a state senator. You didn't know he was a state senator. And you pulled him over six time or seven time in the last few months because he has an expensive vehicle and he's Hispanic. And you white officer here in Driscoll, which happened, he finally tried, he finally went to the governor and said, they're making, uh, they're breaking, it's, it's breaking the law when you do that, when you pull over without cause. Now, you would think after all of these incidents to the average public, you would think that they would not be doing, they will do it all day today. That's what you don't get. Because the chief can call in those officers in a smaller department, whether it be Robstown, whether it be Kingsville, what he can call them in and say, Racial profiling is illegal. Illegal stops, pulling people over, and there's nothing wrong with the vehicle, and you lying about it, that's also breaking the law. The chief can tell his officers that. And they, this very day, will be doing that nonstop. That's what you ain't getting. And you say, but that's not as... We do not justify the shooting, but what you are not understanding is that is not being fixed at all. The, the young boy by the name of Casey, the, the, he worked this way in Aransas Pass, another little police department, which is, you know, 20 miles here from where I live. Go down the road, we used to fish over there. It's Bay area. <laughs> they went looking for uh, someone that had a warrant. These are the cops in Aransas Pass. And they went into a workplace where they thought the guy was but they got the wrong guy. It was a different name and it was the wrong guy. But they thought he had a warrant and they assaulted that kid. Then, they, this is all witnessed, this is all documented. The news media covered it. They planted pot on the kid and then they went after him, charged him. And even the kid's ex-wife, who was not nice, you know, she said, no, no, this is... And instead of saying, look, you made a mistake, they went full force. As far as I know, they're still going after him. Then the media, I think it was Channel 6 News here, they actually tried to expose it. They said, well, you know you broke the law. Officers, you know you did all this, you know. And finally, and there's written on it, there was a Dallas Justice League did a thing on it. it it's all well known. They're still breaking the law today. Their answer was, prove it. Prove it. Okay, it's a black air traffic controller. I gave that case. He got pulled over in Kingsville. They waited till he went to a country road, and he gave his story here. The black air traffic controller. They waited. They targeted him, thinking he's black. Called him nigger. Pulled him over, nigger. The guy said, "Look, I'm 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 federal civil service work. I'm an air traffic control." He asked the officer his badge number. And his name, he said, I ain't giving you shit. Now, the cops saying that to him. You would think, after all those of you that are out there saying, oh, this, that's going to go on all day today. Do you understand that? They're going to be out on, I'm not sure I'm going to go to Kingsville today. Maybe tomorrow. They're going to still be out there. 
all day, consistently doing what I just explained to you. And some of those things lead to their harassments that would lead to like a Sandra Bland hanging or whatever. Now, when this guy flipped this Marine, because he saw another video of a little four-year-old girl in the vehicle where an officer unloaded his weapon into that vehicle and shot the boyfriend of the mother of the girl. That would have absolutely, and today, if incidents like that happen, every cop at that scene will lie on the police report. Every cop on that scene will lie about the witnesses in that case because this happens over and over and over and over. They will continue to be pulling people illegally over and all breaking the law. All breaking the law. Some will break it to a higher degree or to a lesser degree. Now, every officer will not be doing that. Every, uh, but the ones that are doing it, even if they get called in by a chief, and these departments here are about this, somewhat like the fire department sides that I worked at, some of the police departments are smaller. But people think that, well, if the police chief tells one of his men, look, you're breaking the law here, the, the public thinks he will stop breaking the law. Maybe the two guys out of a 20-something guy department that guy will go right into his vehicle. And if a black person or a Hispanic woman complained about that officer, he will go into that vehicle and he will target nonstop on duty either the Hispanic woman or the black woman. He will lie about it. It will be public. It will be known. The mayor, the commissioners, everybody could know about it. I just gave you the Aransas Pass. It's documented, sworn affidavits. Those cops assaulted went after and they're on the job. And if, when they got asked the question by the local media, you know what you've done, officers, in the range of space is absolutely criminal, and their answer was, prove it. We know it's criminal. You know it's criminal. But proof in our part of the country means you make a complaint to us. We're the cops. Proof in our part of the country means then it goes to a prosecutor. And whether they're involved in illegal activity like the sheriff and that other Victoria who got uh, convicted of molesting boys, uh, kids that came into the judges' courts there, this is Victoria. This case I posted, that sheriff was uh, sexually uh, molesting those kids. He's now got, they finally caught him, but everybody knew it was going. Proof in that type of a system means nothing. And the average public, so now, a deranged Marine, seeing it again, knowing that even if the video with that officer that unloaded his weapon into that vehicle with a four-year-old black girl right there, that deranged Marine who flipped, he knows that if it wasn't on video, and even if it is on video, that every one of those officers would be willing to lie. And they would be willing to lie today if another incident took place. Every incident where an officer shoots a black man is not criminal or unjust. But the ones that are, the ones that are, everyone lies on those cases. And they cover it up all the way up to the mayor of Chicago. And the only reason it was finally revealed that the officers shot that black kid who was not coming. So they lied on every report. All of the police chief, the mayor, the commission, everybody lied and took the whole power of the city of Chicago, which is highly corrupt under the mayor, Rahm Emanuel, and they took it to accuse the black witnesses in the shooting of that Laquan McDonald and to say every black family member, every black witness, every little black four-year-old that might be in the back of a vehicle, we're all calling them liars. That's an, an experience that is true. So, this person who did something we, we don't justify, the average argument now is going to be, well, certainly this doesn't go on. I'm telling you today it will go on. Today it will, even though you might have 
I was going to a McDonald's about a year and a half ago, or Burger King McDonald's, but it was all the way in like the Cal Allen area, because I said, oh, this will be a different place. I, I like going to, to work on laptops, but it was kind of small, and then I realized it was too small for me, because the two nice girls that were working at the counter, and I joke around and all, uh, but then uh, the guys that were doing the maintenance, Mexican guys, Hispanics, and all tattoos, and I said, oh, he's probably your, like the guys I work with, and I talked to them a little bit, and sure enough, they were, they were married, to the, so that's why it was too small for me, because the two janitors were married to the two ladies that were working, but all that was fine, but uh, he f eventually told me that he did time in prison, okay, in Robstown, actually, but he's working there. But he said, you know, that S the sheriff's guy that initially, you know, arrested him, whatever. He said, oh, that guy follows me, goes after me, harasses my wife. I believed it. Because they got a stick up their ass. And the average public looks at the uniform. And does not recognize that many of these guys lie out their ass. They will lie about murder. They will lie. Many of them do that. And you have the impression, you have the impression when you see the uniform, that certainly that would not be so. Now, all of them do not do that, but many more than you are aware of. And you would think after all the incidents that we have had, you would think that today, at least in this day, they would not break the law. And I swear to you, they will be out in the various roads that I ride. They will be right along that road. I give you many examples of the illegal stops they made on me. And they are not going, that element is going to work today to break law. And it might be in a minor way. It might be pulling over that Hispanic state senator the sixth, seventh time because he had an expensive vehicle. Every one of those was illegal. And you would think finally, somehow, they would finally call these guys in and say, look, you know, you're cops and you can't break the law lie. And if someone dies at the discharge of your gun and there's a four-year-old girl in the vehicle, you can't lie about it yet. They will keep lying. That's what you don't see. That's what I mean by systemic. I guarantee you today they will be uh, doing illegal activities right where I live. Today, the boy that they framed by the name of Casey in Aransas, they're still going after that kid. What, two and a half years after that? Every cop that planted the evidence, witnesses said they assaulted him. They are going strong. They are going strong. And every record, you, I used to go to work and check the trucks and you do so. Many of those guys are going to work with one intent. With one intent. And it's either to go after those that have exposed their crimes or to continue to commit them. Not every cop, but many will do that. And there will continue to be incidents where officers will wrongfully discharge a weapon and kill. There will continue to be them. And I guarantee you, not in 6% or 8%, in the ones where they were in the wrong, they will all lie about it. And every other officer on that scene will also fill out the report and lie about it. And then they will maybe destroy their dash cam their camera, their body camera. They will continue to do that. All of this is illegal. All of this is illegal. And they will be doing that today. Now, none of this, which you're hearing of me, is justifying the shooting of those Baton Rouge cops. But... One statement I saw from the Marine who shot those officers in Baton Rouge, he basically said, the only way we can deal with bullies is by violence. And even if you just saw one aspect of what I shared, and maybe saw that that Marine knows what I just told you, that it would con it's going to continue to go on in this country, it's not going to be fixed because civilian farms are incapable of it, maybe you can understand, not justify, but how in his mind 
something flipped. And he said, the only way you deal with bullies is by force. Because as much as we would like to tell everybody that's not the answer, that's exactly what we instill in these Marines and soldiers when we have them killed, unjustifiably. If it's a, if it's a just war, it's a self-defense war, then it's done in self-defense. But if it's not, you're telling them, this is how you're going to deal with bullies. And in his mind, the Baton Rouge killer, he knows what I just told you, that all that you have seen is going to continue to go on. Okay? Because you're not understanding the way civilian departments work. Even if you called in an officer, and a woman even went and complained, and even said, that officer just made me give him all of sex. Now, these are, these are cases I'm giving you, actually. That woman can go and complain to the actual chief of a department and say, Officer so-and-so, the case of the man in prison, his name was Hosko, he was a cop, they did continually to black girls. You can even report that. And that police chief can call in that officer and say, Look, we know you're raping women. This is the twelfth complaint we had. And that police chief can actually say to that cop at his local department, we don't have enough on you, you know, maybe to get you or whatever, but we had another complaint. And that cop can leave that office and get in that car and go directly to that girl's house that he raped. And he can say to that girl with gun in hand, he could say, don't you ever open your mouth again. And that girl, knowing she just went to the chief, she now realizes, I have no power. Because the system, the system is not designed in order to protect me. And in the case I just gave you, it's a true case. The cop's name was Holfclaw. He was an ex-football player. And he had those girls give him blowjobs. And they were all minorities with some type of record. And he would say, in one case, it was in court, testified, many of them he did that to. And the chief, the police chief knew, just couldn't stop him. Couldn't stop him. And then that guy still had the gun, had the cop car. That's going to continue to go on. Now, I'm not saying every officer, but to a degree. Immediately, you'd think there would be no more illegal pullovers out here on this highway. They'll be doing it today. They, look, they'll be doing it today. You mean, John, but it's against the law, uh, the illegal, yes. And they're going to get on and their vehicles go to duty as officers and they're going to break the law to correct. And it will not stop. We're, uh, w so what is your solution? I'm telling you it's not going to stop. So if you want to keep people from flipping, you have to have some type of federal change to uh, civilian policing. That's what you're going to need. Uh, the biblical principle of policing that beareth not the sword in vain that doesn't mean you, you use the sword meaning you have the power to kill it doesn't mean you do that unjustifiably scripture teaches in cases where the process of righteous law works then the government not an individual then has the power to take life, doesn't bear the sword in vain. And many Christians think all that I told you today about that will continue to go on, it, many of you think you know some, I know officers, I know cops. The pullovers that the guys pulled me over when they saw I had a badge, not even knowing it was a fire department badge, unless I told them, look, that's my fire department retired. Immediately their tone changed. But oh, you have one of us. Like now they didn't say, "Oh, we're sorry, we wouldn't have made any legal stop unless you were really black," or. But that's their tone changed immediately. But if you're a black girl in that vehicle, they're going to keep doing that. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. So everyone, that's now today saying, "Okay, enough is enough is enough." Everyone that's saying, "See, it's gone." To, they're going to continue doing that all day long today throughout the country. And if you have another incident where a black person is killed and there's a little four-year-old girl right there, bullets flying, 
They will lie about every single thing in that incident. They will even lie about the testimony of a four-year-old black girl if they have to. If the four-year-old black girl said, no, no, he shot daddy because they would lie about that little black girl's testimony. I'm telling you they will because it's inherent within man. Those, those of you who think somehow when people become officers, the wickedness of corruption that the scripture says, their mouths are open graves. Constant lying. That's the description of sinful man. And to you preachers who never open your mouth about any of these issues, and you seem to think that when human beings, whether they put on a, a police or a sheriff, or, you seem to think somehow it would be impossible for them to do unrighteously. And, and others are saying, no, they do it a lot. And unless you begin to recognize that aspect of it, then, then you're not, that's what this black marine said. He said, the only way bullies learn is you've got to hit back. Why would he use that? What would he see recently on the video that was, quote, bully? The little four-year-old black girl in that car. So how do we fix it? Whenever you have a, a killing, you investigate and you don't lie. They're still doing that. You don't have every officer fill out a false report. Say the shot, they shot him once, it was 16. He was coming at us with a knife. Every other, Yeah, he was all coming at us with a knife. Came out video, actually we all lied about that. Okay, the police chief lied. Okay, the mayor Ron Manuel lied. They weren't going to review it. They called all the witnesses that were black, you're liars. All the family members of Laquan McDonald, you're liars, you're liars, you're liars. The pastor of, uh, of the family, until finally the newspaper said, we're going to release the video. Surely you're all giving. And then one hour before the video was released, oh, the mayor says, oh, we're going to press charges on this cop after a year and a half. Why? Because you covered up as much as you could. And anybody that thinks that is solved today, that system of corruption, wickedness, lying, if an officer makes a mistake and accidentally murders somebody, you have to say, tell the truth. Because that's what you're telling even some of my friends that are involved in crimes. Lance testified recently. He went and said, look, I, they admitted he stole something or whatever. And the cops had told him, good, we want to work with you. But you must do the same. You must do the same. When you have a DA that suborns perjury with the detectives in a case which happened, it was recorded. And you're getting people to lie. You're using false testimony. You're telling them that I witness a guy. All of that is criminal. And you did all of that. And that was, came out in court. All of that's criminal. How could you even prosecute another case here? You, you even have false testimony in, in the famous murder death, one of the most famous death row cases, Carlos de Luna. It came out, even books written, that you lied in that case. You, you gave false testimony. And you will continue to do that. You will not stop that. You will you will be pulling people over all day today. You will be racially profiling them today. You will be pulling Hispanic senators over. Now you know he's a senator, but you'll pick someone else. You won't even slow down. And this is what you don't understand. Those of you that are sitting in your little wherever you're at give giving your views, but you're in the house all day. You want to solve it? Then don't turn a blind eye to it. So, Scripture says their mouths are open graves who continually lie. Who's that, John? It's humans. It's you. You see, it's me. Unless we're changed, unless something happens. So, it's inherent that there's going to be another case of some black person that's going to be killed. And if you want to deal justly, and you want to justify, do not lie, officer, on the report. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Say, I thought he was going for a gun, if you thought that. Say, don't say he was coming at me. Don't say that if he wasn't. Because you, that's not corrected. 
And there's going to be people that are going to continue to flip when they see these things. And if you want to stop that, you deal with all of it. But that Marine and the other one that shot the five Dallas cops, which is unjustifiable, what they have come to in their thinking was, okay, now we've tried to deal with issues long enough, the black community, you know, and they've come to a time where they said, we're going to deal with it sort of like the way our country has trained us, because they were military, to deal with these other differences we have with other nations. And maybe the other nations, maybe people in those nations would be saying, wait a minute, you got to understand, you got to, and, and the military's trained these guys not to say no more understanding, we're here to kill you, we're going to shoot you, we're going to kill you, we're going to depose this guy. You know, that's it, that's the way our military trained them, and they're just using that. I'm not justifying you, but that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They're saying, that's it, enough. They're saying, another four, we saw a four-year-old girl telling her mommy, come down, he won't shoot you, mommy. They're tired of it. They know it's going to continue to go on. They know that if there's an unjustified shooting this very day, that those cops will lie about it. Because I just showed you. No, anybody that's under the impression that somehow, after all that's happened, that it's now fixed, you're absolutely deluded. You're absolutely deluded and you have no intelligence. Because you, if you wanted to work for the safety of the officers, then you understand there is a greater systemic problem. I guarantee you today, they will be going after people. You think they'd fix that kid they're still going after? Two and a half years ago, they got the wrong kid going after his family. The cops are all on duty there, saying, prove it. We broke the law, we're breaking it, and, and we're going to go strong. Now, that might not be your experience, but it's the experience of many others. And so some of them are saying to you, F you. We're taking it to the streets. That's what these are doing. And you others that are saying it must stop it, they're ignoring you. You Facebookers and everybody else say, well, that's it. That's it. They're like, they don't even give a shit of what you're saying. They're, they passed you. They're saying, we've decided, we've made a decision, which I don't agree with. And they said, we're going to just take it to the street. They're tired of you, the talking heads. You guys that just talk and have no action. No, I, I don't listen to you either. So why should we listen to you, John? Because I'm at least out on the street. I'm at least making an effort. Those that are just talking about it never lift a finger, live in a little fake life. I don't listen to you either. I don't listen to you either. So, we, we condemn the killing. But, but stop breaking the law. Stop lying every time there's a killing that you know it was wrong. Don't shoot into a vehicle if there's a four-year-old girl in the vehicle telling her mother, don't shoot. If you don't have the self-control, then get the hell off the job. And then be held accountable. And don't lie in the reports like you do constantly. You can't stop. Scripture says your mouths are open graves. You cannot speak truth for one second of your life when you find yourself in that situation. And you will continue to do it today. Because it's not within you to speak truth. Because you're going to be doing it today. Illegal pullovers, illegal harassment of people. It, you're going to do it today. And some people in the country have, have flipped and said, Nah, we're tired of talking about it. And, and, and that's what that man said. He, and, and we're going to call him a coward. No, no. He was deranged. Because he flipped. But he was not deranged in one sense. He acted wrongfully in what he did. But he recognized that he didn't come stop. See, he recognized in a correct way that this will not stop. Meaning the harassment of people. And particularly discrimination against blacks. He knows that will not stop. And I'm here to testify to you, it, w it will not stop. And anybody that thinks... Now it's going to stop. You're in delusion. You are in absolute delusion. You can call those officers in. You can have a talk with them. You, and they will leave that chief's office and go right out and target the black woman that made the complaint. 
they will go right out and go after the Hispanic guy that's working at McDonald's. Who that guy told me those that one SO just goes after him. There was a friend I worked with many years ago. I'm forgetting his name. He was one of the guys he used to preach to at the GL in Kingsville. But we all knew him. And one day in the Kings I, I was living in Kingsville at the time. And it was where another friend of mine owned a junkyard, a firefighter that used to work at the fire department, his name was Rene Barrera. And Rene owned a junkyard off of Kingsville on Corral Street. I used to go there. I liked Rene. I haven't seen these Rene in many years. He, re, he, he got fired, Rene. But either way, he was a good friend of mine. But I heard one day one of the guys that was part of the crowd in Kingsville, I think his name was Gilbert, but he was a mellow guy. Hispanic, you know, but mellow. You wouldn't think, not like the guys that like to fight. They said, man, he shot somebody six times. And I said, man, I wonder what happened. But the guys all knew each other back then. But there was a boyfriend of a relative that used to pick on him. And just sort of like hit him, pick on him. Oh, another Hispanic guy, Mexican. And, and he got tired of it. And he was never really violent. He did time in jail because he was an addict, the one who killed this other guy. But one day he brought the gun. And the other guy didn't know, he, he just had it in his head, pick on me one more time and I'm going to murder you, was in his head. And that boyfriend of his sister, hey, what's up? They said he started shooting, and the guy turned around and was running. Shot him five, six times, bled out. And my friend, his name is Gilbert, many years ago, and he, he's probably out of prison by now. But he probably served maybe eight years. You could get like 35 years, you know, you only serve like eight. People don't know that. I'm sure he's out, but he just got to a point where he said to himself, ah, I'll pay the price. Now, I don't justify that. I don't justify that. But that's what these people are now doing. And you can argue with them all you want. You can have the video of the little girl saying, Mommy, mommy, he won't shoot you. And you can explain that to these people. And this and that. They're, they're saying, no, no. We've seen it too much. I don't agree with it, but they're not listening to you anymore. They're basically saying, we're tired of it. We're tired of it. And it's going. That's what you don't understand. That's what you, you, you think somehow it's resolved. Because your experience is not uh, what everyone experiences. If you had your little 16-year-old uh, daughter just getting ready to graduate high school, perfect life, no drug problems, nothing, and the cops accidentally mistook her for another person that had a warrant, and they went in your daughter's classroom, maybe she's a senior in high school, and she's like, what's up? And the cops hit her and said, we know who you are, come with us, bitch. What? Please, please, uh that's your daughter, Mr. White Man. And this cop said, come on. And then you found out, the cops found out, oh, it's the wrong girl. Instead of saying, oh, I'm so sorry, honey, you had a life ahead of you. You're just going to graduate. Instead, they said, here's some pot, bitch. Now we're going to charge your ass. And she might say, well, wait, I'm going to get my boyfriend to testify that what you just did to me. And the cops would say, go ahead and get your boyfriend. Get the teacher, get everyone in that class, because we run the show. And if the teacher and your boyfriend dare say how we set your ass up, we will go after them because we're cops. But that's the exact true testimony that happened right here. And you assholes that are saying that you can't even recognize that if that was your daughter, you'd be pissed off. But you're sitting in your house, just spewing off the mouth, never once interacting, engaging, doing a damn courageous act in your whole life. And even if you got pulled over today, just for a minor thing, you'd be shitting in your pants. But yet you talk like you're so tough when you have one little form. And you don't know what you're talking about.
Because if that was your daughter that a cop did that to, you'd be pissed off. You wouldn't be out there spewing how wonderful everything is. And if you got so pissed off that they did that to your daughter, and you went and flipped and sh sh killed that cop that did that to your daughter, and I sat here today and said, you were such a pussy. You were such a coward. Because some cops beat the shit out of your daughter and she was 15. You're such a pussy that you couldn't take that. that that's your delusion. That, that's your description of this guy who flipped. He flipped because he identified with that case. What are you, stupid? You can't see that? You, are you ignorant? So, tell the truth. Say he flipped because he didn't know how to rightfully handle it. And don't say it's now all fixed on the policing side, because it's not. It's not all fixed. So we advocate what? We want change in the system. If we catch another one of you that you're killing somebody, officer, and you lie and you dash cam, there's no, they have no penalty for that. If we catch you lying about pulling your dash cam, you're getting fired. You can't even discipline them for that. They don't even get discipline for the destroying of evidence. They don't even get discipline for falsifying documents. They don't get disciplined for suborning false testimony. They don't get disciplined for beating the shit out of citizens. They don't get disciplined for playing Xanax on people. They keep rolling. They keep rolling. Committing crimes on a daily basis. And you call that black guy a coward. And you shit your pants if a cop pulls you over with his lights. You're the coward. Because you can't face the reality. He did a wrong thing because he got tired of seeing it. That's why he did that. Acknowledge that what he saw was an on what he, those videos, every cop in those videos, before videos come out, lie. They give false records, false testimony. Are you stupid? Can't you see that? You're a part of the problem if you can't recognize that many of those cases, those cops are breaking the law. And many of you white defenders of those cops are just as much of a coward, much more than the guy who shot those officers. Because you, like I said, you'd shit your pants if a cop even pulled a lie. Why? You say, well, yo, I was not breaking the law. It makes no difference in many of the cases. Because they're going to work with a stick up their ass to say who we're going to fuck over today. Many of them do that. So wake up. Wake up. The system's not fixed. You put a federal system in place. We catch another incident where you falsify records, especially in the murder of a person. You have every one of those officers on the scene lying about it. You discharge that weapon with a four-year-old in that vehicle. With that, that's not going to entail just a little police report. That's going to entail you immediately being investigated, taken off the department, not with pay, but without pay. Many of those cases, they just flipped them away. And many of them, they lied about. Official reports, documents. So you want to keep people from flipping like that shooter? Then you deal with that. You deal with that. This would be Baton Rouge number update number two. I got a teaching video that's going to go up. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for you will inherit all nations. Pour out your wrath on the heathen that do not know you, and on the kingdoms that have not called upon your name. Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. A king that sits on the throne of judgment scatters away all evil with his eyes. 